Okay, we got ourselves an episode 12 cut content for Classroom of the Elite by Mr. Baseless Upen. Let's go. Classroom of the Elite season 3 episode 12 is here, jamming my favorite light novel volume into the final two episodes. Okay. Honestly, at this point, I don't even have the energy to be mad. I just really Come on. Come on. We're almost to finish that. We got to finish hard, bro. Come on. Let's mull together. Come on. I hope they don't ruin the last episode. Also, Tomorrow. before I talk about all the cut content for this episode, I have to mention that this episode rearranged a lot of scenes and changed some stuff around. So okay. I'm only going to be talking about cut content from moments that did get adapted in episode 12 and things that I'm sure are going to be completely skipped. Also, because of the rearranged scenes, things I should have talked about in this video might be in the next spoilers video, depending on whether they get skipped or not. With all it's that spoilers. Honestly, I don't really mind it too much. I'm fine with watching that it. That being said though, let's dive into all the cut content for this episode. This time the volume starts with a Horikita monologue, oh. which was jammed into like 10 seconds when Horikita was cutting her hair. In her monologue- What did she say? She's like, goodbye to the fake me who's actually the real me, who's actually the fake me, who's actually the real me. And then she looked at a pair of scissors and then she got a haircut and then she wore a pink jacket. And then she changed. And I was like, damn, character development. <laughs> Let's go, Susan. Eh? Log Horikita talks about whether she wants to meet with Manabu or not, and being anxious about how he's gonna feel about her. Along with her talking about how she feels like a fake and hiding her true self, mm. pretending to be a completely different person, along with her finally coming to the decision to cut her hair. Next up, we have Q. I hear that uh, whenever Susanne has like uh, long hair, that's when all the important character development happens. And when she has short hair, she's basically benched. So is it safe to say Susanne is like done? Is she just going to be chilling for like the next couple of months in this show until her hair grows to like, I don't know, symbolize that Susanne is ready to be fucking edgy and emo. And I don't know. You've heard that she develops as, she, as it grows out. I don't know. I'm honestly a fan of the short hair guy, right? I, I enjoy the, I'm sure a lot of people have the idealized image of the Horikita Suzune. Tsundere, black hair, jet black, you know, ice queen, that style, right? That's why a lot of people I think are upset about the haircut and the change in persona. I don't really mind, probably because I never had that much loyalty towards that um, Tsundere, ice queen, long jet hair, black Suzune. I was always making fun of her. I was always shitting on her. So I was like, I don't really care. I think it's a nice twist. Like, it's it's fresh, right? It's fresh. Yo coming to school for the graduation ceremony. He also mentions that he's actually really excited for it as it would be his first time experiencing one. First time experience because he's never graduated from elementary school because he was always in the white room. He never graduated from the white room, right? Which begs the question, how the fuck did he even leave the white room? It wasn't, wasn't it hinted, don't spoil me, but wasn't it hinted in like season two about some kind of butler that like quote unquote died because of Koji? That's what dad was trying to say, right? Dad was like, hey, this butler you're like, he died because of you, bitch. It's on you. Wasn't he trying to like help Koji or some shit? I forget. Did someone smuggle him out? After that, he runs into Yukimura on the way there and they talk about a lot of things such as the results of the special exam and Yukimura mentioning how he feels dumb for trying to get help from Katsuragi. <laughs> Their conversation was quite long, so I'm kind of- Katsuragi pretty much roasted us, right, when we asked about doing some shady shit. I forget exactly what he said, but I remember him shitting on us. Just glossing over it, but it was a pretty good scene as Kiyo also thinks about how much Yukimura has grown over this year. He changed from being a person who thought academics was everything hmm. and looked down on people he considered dumb to- Did he? Did he look down on people that were dumb? Keisei development. I feel like the majority was there. Was there? What, where was the example in the anime where Keisei like shit on other people that had like lower marks? Were there like specific moments? I feel like a lot of the development happened in the mountain arc in season three in the beginning when basically we just we just cried it out, right? Hashimoto, you know, talking about his dreams and shit. Then you know Ishizaki and then Keisei and it's like family, you know. I feel like that was all the major development, but huh, I never knew that he was kind of looking down on people that got lower marks than him. <laughs> to slowly realizing the power of teamwork and trying to help the class in a way that wasn't through academics, even though he did kind of fail. We also get to see the class points out. 
dude, the gap between A and everyone else is just so crazy, bro. It's just fucking crazy. And even after Ryu and beat each no says class, huh? They're still behind. Well, obviously, because they were already in, you know, they, they were already ahead. After the exam. And as you can see, we took a fat L. Looking good for we took a fat class. L, huh? Then we finally have the graduation speech. First up, Kyo wonders how he's gonna look up there during his graduation in two years. Will he graduate? How will I look standing up there myself two years from now, I wondered. And what will I be thinking about? Probably nothing important to the anime because he fucking just stares at the camera even, even though all the different things are happening, right? I wanted to believe you can still envision a great many possibilities if you've already decided what path to take. I wanted to believe that what I learned here would help me in life like a source of mental nourishment. Hmm. I don't even know what Kyo wants to do. Does he even have goals, ambitions outside of this current, you know, endeavor of escaping the white room, having some a little bit of freedom away from dad, living a semblance of a, a normal high school student? Did he ever even think about what happens after? And what he will be thinking about. Really sad that this got cut. After that, Kyo noticed how the first year students have changed compared to the start of the school year. And Manabu also mentions this during his speech. Aside from that, the scene was pretty much the same. Then we have the... Is there any student that never changed? Probably some, like, um, side characters that we never interacted with. Pretty sure, like, every character that was kind of important and worked around with Koji, they pretty much changed, right? Like, even fucking Ike. Ike, I, I, I think Ike changed. Suru definitely changed. Yamauchi is straight up fucking gone. Uh, Hakase, Hakase, Professor, uh, he's such a static character, he never gets that much screen time, same with Hondo, and these are other NPC characters you don't really get to see, so like, you can't really say like, they changed or not, because we never get to really see them, they're just kind of the static, and just in the background, the girls, like, K definitely changed, Kushida, Kush did Kushida change? Well, she took her fucking mask off, she, she showed us, you know, what she's all about, Suzune, absolutely, Fucking uh, Matsushita, we don't barely know her. Michan started talking. <laughs> Koenji, did he change? <sighs> the amount of girls that he fucked probably changed. Yeah, yeah, I think that's development. The amount of dates, the amount of fucking pussy he's slaying, that, that definitely changed. So I, I would argue that Koenji has changed. What, what, what else is there? Fucking uh, Haruka. Haruka, Sa Sakura didn't change? Sakura didn't change? Fuck, I, I, I should have went to Sakura immediately. I was really thinking about who I should fucking target and, and bully, but that bitch didn't change for sure. Well, no, she did change. She changed in like the first half of season one, right? And then after that, it's just been nothing. Like Sakura was like, ooh, my only fan is my camera. And then, and then we got that done, and then she just remained static throughout the rest of the fucking seasons. Not even just one season, fucking three seasons now, bro. Well, between Kyo and Arisu's father. First up, their conversation was way longer in the light novel, which is honestly the case with this entire episode. Every conversation in this episode feels like an exposition to move the plot forward rather than two characters talking, hmm. which really sucks. The anime only goes over the key points of this conversation, such as setting up the meeting between Mashima Sensei. But I still wish they kept in this line of Kyo saying that. Until now, I live my life at the school by the principle of trying as much as possible to avoid attention. I came to the school because I wanted to spend three years as a normal student. Probably the worst fucking school you could have come to if you wanted to, you know, spend time as a normal high school student. Like, I understand the initial goal was to get away from dad and this school just happens to be the only facility that would allow, you know, uh, Anakoji's dad to pretty much, like, be away, even though that's not really true anymore. He showed up, he's sending his agents in, right? But it's like, bro, as a normal student, I feel like this is the fucking, this is the high, this is the fucking high school of sociopaths. Everybody is a Fucking the scumbag. Well, not really. Not everybody. But there's this theme of conniving, deceiving, you know, mind game, the lies, deceit. It's like, this is not a slice of life anime where you just cute girls and cute things like Bochi, dude. For the first time. Wait, that was my goal when I started here. How I felt, my true feelings, which brought me here. For the first time in my entire life, I'm getting, I'm setting goals for myself and then trying to follow through on them, I added. 
for the first time in my, I think that's a very important distinction, right? I don't know, having like ownership over his life, making his own decisions rather than like following what the white room teachings would say. I mean, his entire life, he is setting goals for himself. Cool. And the anime also cuts out. Arisu dad saying that there's not much that they can do in regards to Sukishiro and Kyo replying that he will handle Sukishiro himself and he <laughs> really? really needs them to have his back if things go south and try to stop him from exploiting his powers as the director. It's crazy how like the fucking game, like before it was like Anakoji versus uh, Ryuan. Ayanokoji versus fucking, uh, I, I don't know, like Arisu a little bit. Now it's just like, Ayanokoji versus the principal. <laughs> like, we're not, you know, quote unquote, fighting the students anymore. We straight up have beef with the actual fucking principal or the acting director of this school, which is fucking insane to me. It's like, how can we compete with this dude? Who does, he's a grown ass adult. He's an actual chairman director of our school. What the fuck do we do? I don't know. We can't just like beat him up. He's pretty good at piano calligraphy too. What do we do? Uh, fucking, we can't like um do the, oh, this, this, you know, we, let, let's fucking use Sakura. Let's use Sakura and say, make a scenario where Skishiro accidentally bumps into Sakura and you know, it's, it's sexual assault. And it's like, all right, fucking ban the principal now because he sexually assaulted Sakura. I don't know. We have Mashima. And maybe the whole point was to catch them, right? We want to catch them when they're doing shady shit, like cheating during the, the exams, right? And that's what really emboldened Mashima to be like, you know what? Fuck that. I don't stand for that, right? So we just have to catch him in the act of doing some shady shit, then use that as proof. And then who do, who do we report to, though? There must be like a, a board of directors, right? If he's the chairman, there must be executives in that board that then can vote to say, yes, he stays. Yes, he doesn't. But it's like, who's to say that entire fucking board of directors has already been infiltrated by white room people, right? If it's like, if, the, if, if, Skish, if, if Aonokoji's dad, assuming it's Aonokoji's dad, if he can just implant Skishiro here, why couldn't he be able to implant the rest of his people into the fucking board so no matter what we do, nothing will fucking change? Then we move on to the meeting with Chabashira and Mashima Sensei. Once again, this was way longer in the light novel. They also skipped Kiyo talking with Chabashira before Mashima Sensei arrived. Chabashira talks about how she is disappointed in Kiyo because he lost in the special exam despite being so confident. Principal scamming and lying and fucking cheating against them. Why don't you do something, Chad, instead of standing there with your fucking cleavage? And starts to doubt his abilities. Doubt? So in order to make doubt? Him help him, Kyo throws in a bone. I've changed my mind. Starting in April, I'm seriously planning to shoot for Class A, I told her. What kind of joke is this? What in the world are you even thinking, setting up a meeting here? I'm telling the truth. By the end of our second year... Okay, here's another prophecy. Here's another prophecy by Anakoji. It's already come true once. So the prophecy now, by the end of our second year, I plan for our class to be out of D and C. Minimum B. There's too big a gap in our class points to guarantee that. We'll be able to move to class A, but I am planning to overtake class B. Rest in peace, each of those. I guess that's kind of um, why there was like a, such a focused scene of, you know, uh, Susan is saying uh, Alliance is off, right? It's, it's all fair games now saying that he's seriously gonna try to reach for class A. Then Mashima Sensei arrives with Arisu and then they begin their talk which was really long compared to the anime. I doubt most of y'all are gonna be interested in the discussion so I'm not gonna dive into all the details though. Then we have the graduation party and the first change that really annoyed me in this episode. Mm. Before Manabu goes over to talk with Kyo. He Nagumo? actually gets approached by Nagumo. Oh. And unlike what you would expect, he goes in for a handshake one what? last time and genuinely congratulates Manabu for graduating in Class A. His eyes... Genuine? Nagumo being genuine? Respect? Is he actually respecting him? Hmm, okay, okay. I am genuinely mad this scene got cut because it adds so much to Nagumo's character. Maybe I would go as far to argue that the anime did this intentionally to make Nagumo not be as humanized. You know what I mean? Like, for example, Anakoji in the light novel, there's so many inner monologues, thoughts that you, we, we hear 
that makes us think that, damn, he's pretty normal. He's not this cold, ruthless, calculating robot like the anime depicts him. The anime cuts any of that shit away, right? Anime is like, nope, cold, calculating, fucking sociopath. That's what this character is going to be. So maybe the anime was like, you know what? Nagumo, also the same thing. Get rid of the fucking handshake. No fucking friendly, comforting things. No, he's going to be this mysterious fucking playboy behind the scenes manipulating everybody. Ever since he was introduced, he always gives off an overconfident and narcissistic vibe. Yes, intentionally. Every scene, every scene, he's the lighting, the way that he's like fucking going like this. Like, <laughs> you know, he's got the whole villain vibes, right? I feel like that's all very intentional. Then seeing him genuinely respecting Manabu and being sad that they couldn't be in the same year together really adds some much needed layers to his character. You want it to be in the same year, huh? Then Nagumo talks about how he still plans to turn the school into a true meritocracy. Okay, yes, I will do my utmost in what little time I have left here. After you're gone, I'm going to turn the school into a true meritocracy. We've already finished making the preparations, said Nagumo. Horikita's brothers seem to receive this positively. Nodding once. You're, uh, you regret not being the same age as me. I admit I might share the feeling. I'm a little disappointed. I won't get to see what kind of school you're building. I'm sure there are things I could understand much better if I were to see them up close. This is very interesting because it's like now the whole like structure of classes and how we're dependent on these fucking idiots. For example. Uh, season 1, what do we have to do? There's so many idiots in our fucking class, like EK, Sudo, Yamauchi. They suck at studying, so what do we have to do? Even though they fucking suck, we can't just cut them off. Even if we do well, if these idiots do bad, the class suffers. Now, in this kind of environment, now we're no longer, like, stuck with baggage. We can just, like, individually pop off. So that's why I kept, like, trying to theorize and think about a situation where it's like, now, if we're not, no longer classroom dependent, maybe we're just going to pick like the top people. For example, what was the point of season, like the first year? I keep saying that it's to identify the key players. For like Arisu, Katsuragi, Arisu has Hashimoto and the fighting guy too, right? There's some important key players there. Ryuen, you know, Ishizaki family, Ibuki, Albert, blah, blah, blah. You know, fucking Ichinose, Kanzaki, I guess, that's about it. And in class D, we have our people too, right? And those individuals will somehow collaborate and form little little groups that could, you know, be like a mini class, you know? Instead of like fucking working with these useless pieces of shits in our class, we can just like party up with like the elites, the true elites, and then you rise up with meritocracy. I don't know. Where are we going with And this? Manabu also says that he would have liked to see what kind of school Nagumo was building. Then Nagumo goes over to talk with Suzune and Kyo, which oh. was also skipped in the anime. And this is something extremely funny when you realize the fact that, in the anime, Nagumo and Kyo haven't even interacted once. This in the anime. The anime. They haven't. Kyo has just been like observing him. Same with Nagumo. But have they ever talked to each other? No. They haven't. Is that, is that why they cut it off here? Is that why they're like, shit, we can't have Nagumo approaching Suzune by the punch bowl with Kyo because they never really talked. They'd be out of place. Is that, is that the reason? Is this baseless you pen throwing shade at the anime director for saying, you dumb motherfuckers, you know, cut out all the fucking Nagumo Koji scenes, so what's the fucking point, you know, introducing their talk right now? This man is supposed to be really important during the second year, and he hasn't had a single interaction with the main character. This <sighs> is truly a special anime adaptation. <laughs> truly special. <laughs> that should do it. No, there's a little bit more. Nagumo says that Manabu was one hell of a guy, and Suzune should be proud to have him as a brother. Then he says that they should look forward to the next year while glancing at Kyo. Then Nagumo talks about how much he regrets not being able to properly compete with Manabu because they weren't in the same year. Hmm. And then he says that True respect. he only wanted to be recognized by Manabu. Damn, I've just been trying to get him to recognize me. Well, no, rather it's like I've been attacking Senpai all this time to make him recognize me. Bro, Nagumo's trying so hard to try to get big bro Manabu to recognize him, but all Manabu's attention was at Kyo. Bro, Ayanakoji took all the attention away. Ayanakoji didn't give a fuck, bro was just in piano and calligraphy. And then immediately in episode 2, season 1, what happened? As soon as Manabu was about to go for the palm strike on his dear little sister, 
Kyo takes his hand by force and then makes Manu's heart go doki doki in a way that no other student could possibly do at this school. And Nagumo the entire time was working so hard, doing all these different plans and strategies to get Manu to recognize me. Damn. This is actually very interesting. Huh. This really humanizes Man uh, Nagumo. It makes him seem a lot less like this omnipotent playboy, you know, m puppeteering behind the scenes. It just... Bro just wanted Senpai's attention. And he knows what Manabu plans to do after graduation. You know, you kind of sound like a maiden in love or something, said Asahina. That's her sunflower girl, right? Maybe so. Well, I've heard the general gist of what Senpai is going to do after graduation. And I'm just going to follow after him. What? What is Manabu doing after graduation? Is he just going to college? I feel like someone like him wouldn't just go to some random un university and just graduate and get a regular office job. What would Manabu even do? And what the fuck would Nagumo even follow for? And he's gonna follow him there. And Asahina Senpai's reaction to this was hilarious. And she was basically thinking that Nagumo was gay as hell. <laughs> After that- Huh? <laughs> gay? That's what Asahina did? Damn, damn Asahina, okay? Asahina homophobic? Nah, just kidding. We have a small scene with Hirata, where he talks to Kyo about what he should do with Michan's confession. And also says that he's never seriously dated anyone. Mm. After that, he also asks if he can start calling Ayano Koji by his first name. Speaking of <laughs> gay, <laughs> what is this? So during the discussion of asking Koji what to do on Michan's confession, you then sneak in. Uh, can I can I call you by your first name? Yeah, Kyo 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 Taka. <laughs> What's up? I asked. Uh, um, well, it's just I was wondering. Is it is it okay for me to? Call you Kiyotaka from now on? Huh? I, I was wondering what he was about to say, but that was completely out of left field. And um, if you like, you, you, you can call me by my name too. He added. <laughs> I mean, in the light novel, they're like bros, right? Remember, remember the stuff that was cut out in the light novel compared to the anime? In the light novel, Koji didn't just like say that should do it after looking down on him. He just sat on the bench together and they're like, you know what? Men can cry, bro. I'll, I'll be there for you. I'll lend you a shoulder. I, I, that's, I, there's, not, there's nothing gay about this, bro. It might, it might be a little, little homoerotic, right? A little, little sussy, but nothing wrong with that. He also asks if he can start calling Ayano Koji by his first name with this illustration. <laughs> and the blushing makes him look very sus, to be honest. Hirata boy. <laughs> but it's actually quite a wholesome scene because Hirata says that after that middle school incident, he tried mm. to never get close to anyone. Aww. Then we have the meeting, but that's actually kind of nice for Hirata, man. That's, that's actually so nice. Uh, it's kind of crazy how they just cut that out in the anime, though. Just like Arakoji and Hirata, like settling it out like boys, like in, on the bench together. Instead, it was like a fucking. Again, it's just a spread your leg situation with K just breaking him down. Between Horikita and Ichinose. On his way there, Kyo actually runs into Ibuki on the Ooh. elevator Ooh. and his random encounters with Ibuki. They watched a movie together? Accidentally? They were seated to- Wait, volume 7 point- Is this after the fight or no? Is this after the fight scene? <laughs> so, after Anakoji displays his piano and calligraphy and traumatizes, you know, family. <laughs> then Ibuki somehow accidentally, like, this, like, out of chance. They're just in, like, a movie theater together and she's like, oh shit, what the fuck? <laughs> are like a staple of 0.5 volumes. <laughs> this one was just a very awkward elevator ride. That's hilarious. After that, they got approached by Ishizaki because he was waiting for Ibuki. Then, Ishizaki says that he thought of a great plan to guarantee Class A. Wow. And his plan is... Wow, Ishizaki using his brains. You know, what do we know Ishizaki for in Class uh, C now? Huh? He's the brains of the operation, right? Right? So, I've come up with the ultimate plan up to get to Class A. Wanna be part of it, he asked? What he just asked was so sudden that I was at a complete loss as to how to respond to him. Let me hear it. This ultimate plan of yours. Hell yeah, he replied, proudly pounding his chest with a thump. Get this, bro. You come over to our class? Then, getting to Class A will be a sure thing, right? Huh? What the hell are you spouting all of a sudden, Sadibuki? And hey, 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 wait. 
Wait, you guys are gonna insult and say, holy shit, that's dumb as fuck, but is he wrong? Is he wrong? I don't think he is. Now, obviously, this is an extremely contrived plan. Like, what the fuck? You think Ganako is just gonna join your class of all things? But, but if he did, I bet they could. He's not wrong. To get Kyo to join their class. And he also says that Albert actually likes Kyo. I, I know, right? If you say you're gonna join our team, then we'll welcome you with open arms. I think that you and Ryu and Sun would actually get along pretty well. Oh, we already do. Don't worry about that, bro. Surprisingly, and you know, Albert, he likes you. When you came up in a conversation the other day, dude got like super excited. <laughs> Let's go, Albert! This is the first time uh, I heard of Yamada Albert liking me. Wait, hold on. Could you, could you really interpret however he felt as actually liking me, italicized? Hmm. <laughs> What's going on? It's, uh... I mean... Maybe Albert... Maybe Albert rolls that way, man. Maybe, maybe he finds, you know... I'm a Koji boy attractive. Ma ma I don't know. Maybe this is an actual thing, bro. Kyo says that it's not a bad plan. But of course, Ishizaki didn't think of the details and where they're gonna get the 20 million points. He True. then says that it's more enjoyable for him to have them as enemies instead. Hmm. Then we finally move on to the meeting. This was once again way longer in the light novel. The anime really condensed it. But they did cut out a really important moment during their talk. Kiyo intentionally reveals that he's the one who asked Ichinose to let them fight Class E. Oh, both Ichinose and Horikita were at a point where neither of them were aware of the truth. I supposed there was no reason I couldn't forcibly guide the conversation forward in a way that kept them from becoming aware of it. Ordinarily, the old me would have definitively um, laid the necessary groundwork beforehand or as an emergency stop. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Oh, this is way too much. To see how Horikita is going to react. This also leads to a very important talk between Kiyo and Horikita that definitely needs to be adapted oh? if they have any plans for second year adaptation. What, what? I'm not gonna talk about it in this video because, because spoilers. it will be in the next episode. True. But I'm really wondering how they're gonna handle it considering the fact that Horikita has already cut her hair in the anime. Then we finally have the Manabu scene to end off the episode. His conversation with Kiyo also gets extremely shortened with lots of important stuff cut out. First up, Kiyo apologizes that he couldn't do much to help with stopping Nagumo. That's right, I'm planning on seeing what Nagumo is trying to do for the first time being. For the time being, if he's going to change our grade level, no rather our entire school into a more meritocratic environment, then I can't deny him without experiencing that environment, I told him. I decided that I would simply state what I was going to do with no lies, I see. You're going to soar to even greater heights than I did, said Manabu. <laughs> you think way too highly of, him, of me, I told him. Potential brother-in-law, gotta glaze him up. And then says that he's gonna see what Nagumo is trying to accomplish first. After that... Remember these two sets of phone numbers. First is mine. <laughs> wait, wait, uh, uh, separate phones, right? Because, like, the school gives you phones, right? So, like, outside of graduations, you know, we need Manabu's, like, you know, uh, other home phone number, right? So, we got, we, we got Manabu's uh, phone number. Okay, first is mine. The other is Tachibana. If you have any trouble after graduation, feel free to contact us anytime. If you can't memorize the numbers right now, you can jot them down in your notes. Now, I'm sure he already memorized it. But make sure you delete those notes later. He told me, gotta be, gotta be special about it, okay? Manabu gives Kyo his and Tachibana's phone numbers and tells him to call them if he has any trouble after graduation. Then Manabu talks about leaving an impact on the school, or at least on the students. That actually seemed to have touched Koji again. Huh? Like the whole talk about not really leaving behind a legacy, but like a legacy in terms of making people remember Ayano Koji so that like he lives through them. And then Ayano Koji was like, whoa, that's so cool. And in the light novel, Manabu's words actually leave an impact on him. Then we have Horikita's arrival and talk, which did not have many changes, but they did cut out- <laughs> The way that Manabu reacts when seeing Horikita, Susan, wearing pink blazer with short black hair is crazy. After a really important monologue from Kiyo. Kiyo says that- 
Oh, it wasn't like he was a guy who never smiled at all. But this was just the first time I'd seen him smile so gently. I'd never seen a smile ever again. Ah! I, what did Manabu like smile like Kyo? You know, I bet if he became the brother-in-law, then Manabu would smile a lot. Just one more year. I felt like if I could have spent just one more year with him in the same school, I could have gotten to know the person named Horigita Manabu better, gotten close to him, and I might have been able to change. That really was a pity. Th he thinks that Manabu would have been able to change Kyo, huh? Change how, though? You mean completely undo the White Room teachings? What does he mean, change here, I wonder? If he had even one more year to spend... Like, stop seeing people as tools? Literally reverse White Room mentality and actually become like a... I don't know, a healthy functioning member of society? I, I don't know what he's saying With here. Manabu and learn more about him, he might have been able to change as well. And that is all the cut content and that changes do it. for this episode. That should do it. No, no. Did he say that should do it in the comments? Did he? No, he hasn't. I thought that he was going to end it. Yeah, I'm anticipating a that should do it tomorrow as in, you know, tomorrow's episode. And that's pretty much it. Y'all know what to do. Please go give Mr. Baseless Dupin a subscription. Like his videos if he did. He always gives us such good summaries of things that were cut out. And we have one more episode. A Classroom of the Elite. Season 3. What the fuck happened, bro? It's already been like three months. God damn it, dude. 13 weeks of peak, and I hope that we end off strong, and that should do it.